So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to correctly read and interpret a differential gear pattern. Now, a differential gear pattern is kind of the last step in a differential rebuild. And really what a differential gear pattern tells you is how the pinion gear and how the ring gear, how those two gears are meshing with one another. And based on what you're seeing with the differential gear pattern, that is gonna dictate what sort of shimming changes you need to do to your differential setup in order to have a quiet set of gears. So you may have to take this differential apart three or five times based on what you're seeing with this gear pattern. Now, with that in mind, if you are using a used set of gears, like a set of gears that has already been ran in another, in another vehicle, or let's say you're just doing a rebuild and freshening of the axle with new bearings and nothing else, you really wanna have your gear pattern be the exact same as what it was before you took it apart. And the reason for that is after a set of ring and pinion gears has been ran for an extended period of time, let's say more than about three to 500 miles, that ring and pinion set is now matched, right? Well, once you have a matched ring and pinion and they both uh, have established some wear in them, if you try to change that wear pattern of the, the ring and pinion gears, you're gonna cause noise. So if you're doing a stock rebuild with the same ring and pinion or you're using a used set of ring and pinion gears, you really need to make sure that you have the same pattern when you took it apart as what you do when you go back together. They need to be one and the same in order to not have any noise. The other thing you need to note here is if you went out and you bought the cheapest set of gears that you could get your hands on, um, typically those gears probably aren't gonna be cut quite as well as a high quality gear set and you may struggle to get a quote unquote good pattern out of those gears simply because they were manufactured to a poor tolerance or possibly manufactured wrong. So you're gonna sit there and chase your tail trying to get this gear pattern straightened out, have this thing apart three and four times because you bought a cheap set of gears that aren't cut correctly. It's not your setup that might necessarily be wrong. It could be the gears that you're using. So any gear set that you buy should come with some sort of marking compound. Um, the gears that I bought, they did include some, but it was not very much. So I have enough to do about three teeth in maybe three locations. What you guys will find is the gear marking compound may be a little thick and it just won't spread evenly across the teeth. And then what you need to do in that case is simply just take one or two drops of gear oil and mix it in with the gear marking compound and it should thin it out to make it really easy to spread. If the marking compound is too thick, guys, what you'll find is it's, it'll be very, very hard to establish a pattern. So the, the paint will be so thick that it won't, um, it won't really show you where the two gears are contacting with one another. The paint won't flow out of the way where the gears are making contact. So when I'm doing this, I'm just doing a couple teeth. Um, I've seen a bunch of people, they'll paint the, you know, the entire ring gear. If you guys wanna do that, that's completely up to you. Usually if you do three teeth in two or three locations, provided you're using quality parts here, typically you don't have any problems. So first thing we're gonna go over here is gonna be drive side, coast side. So this is the drive side of the gear back here. Every one of these. So this is the drive side because when you're driving down the road, that way is forward, right? So everything is being driven this way. Now just on the opposite side of that, when it's being rotated backwards, this in here would be the coast side. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna paint the teeth on the drive side and the coast side. Once you do that, grab a ratchet and turn your pinion nut while you put some drag on the carrier with your hand. Um, if you don't put drag on the carrier with your hand, you will not get as good of a pattern. Um, it'll be much harder to read. You have to put a little bit of resistance on this assembly to, uh, to be able to get a good uh, reading out of it. So there you can see I've got a drive side pattern. So now I'm gonna reverse it. And now I'm gonna check, do the same thing and I'm gonna get a coast side pattern. So now that you have a good grasp on what you actually need to do to be able to run a differential pattern, 
Um, if you go out on Google and you start looking around, you can find all sorts of charts on how to interpret one of these gear patterns, and they'll start referencing things that you may or may not know what they're talking about. So um, what those positions are, are the different sections of the tooth. So the portion of the tooth that is closest to the differential cover, that is going to be the heel. The portion of the tooth that is closest to the differential carrier, that is going to be the toe. The portion of the tooth that is the high point on the gear closest to the outside edge of the ring gear tooth, that is going to be the crown. And then the portion of the tooth that is down in the valley between the two ring gear teeth, that is going to be the root. Now, depending on this pattern that you have in front of you, you may want to move it from the root to the crown or the crown to the root or from the heel to the toe. And each one of those things requires a different input from you. So when I judge a pattern, 95% of what I'm looking at, guys, is going to be the position from the crown to the root left to right on the tooth. How is that pattern sitting on the tooth? Because the, what, what that is actually showing you is if your pinion depth is good or not. The reason for that is everything that you do here in this differential is sort of built around that pinion depth. And if you change the pinion depth, that is going to change the backlash. If you change the backlash, it's still not gonna change your pinion depth. Everything in this differential is essentially built around the pinion depth. So when I look at a pattern, that is the first thing I'm paying attention to. Is that pattern centered left to right on the tooth? If it's not, what do I need to do to get it to where it needs to be? So that's where, what we're gonna take a look at now is when you start manipulating things as far as shimming changes, what does it actually do to the pattern? So taking a look at the pattern I have here on the screen, this is largely what is gonna be considered an ideal pattern um, by most people. So let me go through and I'm going to label real quick heel, toe, root, and crown just to see so you guys have a point of reference to see where we're at here. And if you t actually take a look at this pattern, it sort of looks like a football. Um, it has sort of like a nice oval shape to it. There's no hard edge at the crown or the root. It's very well centered on the tooth itself. And this is really what you're striving for here when you're setting up a gear pattern. 99.9% .9 of the time, guys, you will not get a pattern that looks like this. Um, this really comes down to, first of all, A, how well you're setting up the gears naturally, but B, it also depends on how the gears that you're using are cut. And I'll be honest, the ones that I have came right from Ford. And the ones from Ford, my pattern looks nothing like this. I'll show you my pattern at the end of the video. But going back to what I was saying, there's a nice radius on the top and bottom edge on the root and the crown. Um, it's nicely centered between the heel and the toe. So let me flip over here and show you guys the other picture that I showed you a second ago. The picture that I have on the left, you can see the, the pattern is much, much higher toward the crown than it is the root. It has a very hard edge on that tooth against the crown. That is how you know you need a thicker pinion shim. A thicker pinion shim will drive the pattern from the crown down to the root. So when you look at the picture on the right, it's just the opposite. That pattern has too deep of a pinion shim. It's gonna do just the opposite. So if you thin out, that pinion shim, it's gonna drive it from the root back up toward the crown. This is, like I said, 95% of what I look at when I look at a pattern because everything in this gear setup is built around the pinion depth. So if your pinion depth is wrong, it really doesn't matter what your backlash is or what you think you need to adjust with your backlash if you have this screwed up. So this right here, what I just told you guys is 95% of what people screw up with these patterns is whenever you have a hard edge like this on one side or the other and not both sides, you have to make an adjustment. So let me pull up some more examples just to show you. So taking a look at the pattern I have here on the screen, guys, knowing what I just told you a second ago, um, what do you guys think that this pattern needs? To me, 
it needs a thicker pinion shim. A thicker pinion shim is gonna move that pattern down toward the root and away from the crown a little bit to get better tooth engagement um, with the pinion. So taking a look at the next one I have here on the screen, this is gonna be very, very similar to the quote unquote ideal pattern that I showed you guys at the beginning. Um, but if you look very closely at this, this pattern is actually slightly offset toward the root, meaning the pinion depth is very minutely too deep. Um, you could change it maybe one or two thousandths and remove some pinion shim and try to get it back up toward the crown. In all honesty, looking at this pattern, yes, it is a little bit offset toward the root, but I'm here to say probably 99.9% .9 of the time you could run this pattern and you wouldn't have any problem. So like I was saying, guys, this is a very, very subjective thing that we're talking about here. And you could ask three different people what their opinion is on some of this stuff, and you may get two different opinions. So just keep all this in mind when you're looking at this stuff. It's very, very subjective what we're dealing with here. So now that you have a basic understanding of how the pinion depth moves the, the gear pattern between the root and the crown, well, the next adjustment we're gonna talk about is gonna be backlash. And the backlash is gonna do the adjustment between the heel and the toe. Now with that said, like I told you guys, 95% of what I look at with these patterns is simply the pinion depth. The reason for that is this Ford 8.8 differential that I'm dealing with here. Ford gives me a specification for backlash. Ford tells me it has to be between eight and 12 thousandths of an inch and you have to play inside that window, right? This is why I don't pay very much attention to backlash adjustments on a gear pattern. I just try to set it within the window and then run the pattern. If it's grossly off, um, maybe I'll start looking at my pinion depth again just to make sure I'm double checking my pinion depth. But generally speaking, if you can get the pinion depth relatively close, your backlash adjustment should be relatively close just based on the fact that they give you a window that you're supposed to be playing in. So taking a look at the pattern I have here on the screen, um, this shows exactly what I was talking about. Somebody that would look at this pattern is gonna look at this and go, wow, this is way off. It's totally offset to the toe. I need to change my backlash to get this straightened back out. But like I said, you're limited on your backlash adjustment by the manufacturer's specification. So really, what is wrong here? If you actually stop and take a look at this pattern, the pinion depth is way off. If you see, it has a very hard edge down on the root and you can transfer some of that up toward the crown by reducing the thickness of the pinion shim. When you reduce the thickness of that pinion shim, I'd be willing to bet that some of this toe offset that you're seeing in this pattern is gonna shift back up toward the heel when you get the pinion depth straightened back out. So this pattern I have on the screen now is a little bit more realistic. So if you take a look, the pinion depth on this is actually very, very close. It's maybe slightly offset toward the root, but at any rate, it's definitely has a major offset toward the toe. So the way that you transfer a gear pattern from the toe to the heel is you would loosen the backlash. When you loosen the backlash, it's gonna move that pattern up toward the heel. So naturally, if you have a pattern that is up by the heel and you wanna bring it down toward the toe, you are going to reduce the backlash, do just the opposite. But what you have to remember here is you have to play within the manufacturer's specifications for backlash. So there isn't nearly as much adjustment with backlash as what you have with pinion depth. So by all means, try to get the pinion depth right first before you start playing with this. Now this gets into what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. If you bought a poor quality gear set and their gears are not cut correctly, this is where people start chasing their tail um, trying to figure all this stuff out because you may get the pinion depth right, but the position heel to toe may be completely off because the gears are cut wrong. So this is why you need to buy quality parts because you may get this whole thing back together, nail your pinion depth right in the middle where it needs to be, and you're way out on the heel and there's nothing really you can do about it other than try to adjust the backlash as best you can, but you still have to stay within the window that the manufacturer gives you for backlash. So moral of the story is, 
buy quality parts because your life is gonna be so much easier for it. You're gonna save the difference in labor screwing around with this differential had you just spent $50 more on a better quality ring and pinion. Now the other thing we need to note here too guys is everything we've done thus far in the video has only looked at the drive side patterns. Every pattern that I've shown you has been a drive side pattern. And the reason for that is any time that your foot is on the throttle in any way, shape or form, that pinion is pushing on these gears to try and drive these wheels forward, right? Well, that means that pinion is on this uh, drive side wear surface the whole time your foot is on the throttle. The only time that the coast pattern plays into any sort of gear noise is when your foot is off the throttle and the vehicle is coasting down or under braking. So when you're looking at these patterns, you need to prioritize the drive side of any pattern that you're dealing with because that is where the vehicle is gonna spend most of its time when it's being driven. The ring and pinion is gonna wear on the drive side 95% of the time the vehicle's being driven. So that is why you need to prioritize the drive side pattern as opposed to the coast side. Do not sacrifice a drive side pattern to go chase a coast side pattern. Um, if you have a good drive side pattern, maybe try to split the difference between the two and maybe the gears will wear in how you want, want them to. But if it's way, way off, um, generally speaking, it doesn't play out well. So guys, this is where I ended up with my uh, final pattern. If you guys look there, some may say that it's too deep, but I actually added a little bit of pinion shim because when I started looking at the side of the tooth there, I wasn't quite happy with the engagement um, you know, on the tooth. It was, it was a little shallow for my liking, like it was a little bit too close to the crown. I wanted a little bit more root, so I added like a 3000s pinion shim. Um, seemed to help it a little bit, and I'm pretty happy with where that's at. So that's the drive side. You spin this around. That is gonna be my coast side pattern. And guys, this is, like I was telling you, this is why you buy a high quality ring and pinion. Um, this is a Ford Performance 410 ring and pinion in this 8.8, .8, and these Ford gear sets are super easy to set up, guys, if you guys are doing an 8.8 .8 yourself. This is why you spend the extra money, um, because if you actually look at this, it looks very similar to like a used gear set, because the gears are cut so well with one another. You don't see that football pattern, because the, the amount of engagement between the two gears is so high. So guys, that is what I have for this video. Guys, I will have links down in the description uh, to any tools that you would need to rebuild a differential as well as you know the gear marking compound, the acid brushes, things like that, if you guys need any of that stuff. But uh, as always guys, if you guys like the video, hit like. If you wanna see more content, go down and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching guys. Mm -hmm.